Hi guys, um, wanted to talk to you about the condition that you probably have never heard before. If you're a man or a woman at the age of about 45 or 55, and especially if you have sleep apnea, then that's something probably you need to listen to. But there's a condition called floppy eyelid syndrome. I know, kind of sounds funny. And it affects up to 11 or 15% of people in that range, especially with sleep apnea. And the idea is that if you have sleep apnea, it's possible that during the apneic episodes, either you pull on your upper eyelid too much and eventually it stretches, or in the process of uh, slowing down the breathing, you have oxygen delivery to your eyelid going up and down. So whenever you block, oxygen delivery goes down, and when you start rebreathing, uh, the oxygen to the eyelid goes up. And as a result of this kind of ischemia or not enough blood, uh, going to the eyelid and then over perfusion afterwards this kind of wave it creates a change in the laxity or create the looseness in the upper eyelid as a result what happens is that when people fall asleep especially on the side they don't fully close the eye some of the eye stays open and that creates chronic inflammation of the cornea tearing maybe redness itching scratching and so forth and a lot of times uh, people don't associate the two together, meaning sleep apnea with the laxity or looseness of the upper eyelid. But now we understand that this is kind of connected. And uh, there is a conservative treatment for that, which is using CPAP and then using uh, taping of the eyes at night. But a lot of people don't want to do that or ointments in the eyes at night. So there is a minor surgical procedure that can be performed on an outpatient basis and occasionally even under local anesthesia where we go inside right here and kind of tighten the upper eyelids a little bit more. So the test for that is that you wake up in the morning and then you have this tearing and you have redness and itching and scratching, very really uncomfortable feeling, but then it gets better throughout the day and then repeats again in the morning. So that's kind of the symptom. And if you pull on your upper eyelid, okay, look at me, you see, it stretches out. I know, a little scary. You look like this, right? So if the distance from the eyeball to the edge of the lid is less than 10 millimeters, or ideally 6 millimeters, then you're okay. But in some patients with a floppy eyelid, you can really stretch them out. And what happens is that sometimes the eyelid can even flip over. So if you have one of these conditions, if you are not necessarily using CPAP, if you have sleep apnea and you have tearing in the eyes in the morning, uh, give us a call. We do not do primary diagnosis of floppy lid um, syndrome. Usually have to see ophthalmologists that do the testing, that look at the cornea and so forth. And if conservative measurements are not really practical or not working, give us a call. We have three separate procedures that we can do to make the symptoms better. Again, floppy eyelid syndrome and it's loosening of the upper eyelids as a result or associated with sleep apnea, all right?